Welcome to the Root of Power podcast, where I teach you how to step into your power, find alignment, and create a life that you love using holistic methods, interviews with industry leaders, and inspiring stories from people who know that true freedom is found within. I'm your host and health and wellness bestie, Amanda Chills, and I'm so proud of you for choosing to step into the root of your power. What up, podcast fam? Welcome. Welcome to today's episode. I wanted to, before we get started, let you know that I have a very cool 10 tips to increase your energy naturally. So listen, if you are drinking monsters or 19 cups of coffee a day, this is for you, okay? Go to amandachills.com slash energy, and it is totally free. So y'all are welcome. We about to be a bunch of energizer bunnies up in here. Okay, let's get to the episode. Glad you're here. Hello, and welcome back, podcast We are going to be talking today about one of my favorite topics, actually, and that is how to have a creative problem-solving mindset. But before we get there, we're going to have to talk about a victim mindset and why having a victim mindset is just like crack. It's addictive, destructive, and expensive in terms of money and also in terms of time and energy. Now, you may be like, what, Amanda? Crack ain't even that expensive, which how would you know? And also, think about the time and energy you put into it, right? So what is a victim mindset? Let's just jump right in and get to the juicy part of these ABL sold. What is a victim mindset? Now, I'm sure you guys can think of people who are the eternal victim. They're the eternal martyr. Everything happens to them. Nothing works out. It's not their fault. It's so-and-so's fault. They had no other choice. Blah, 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 ad nauseum until the day that they die. Now, for kind of like a more textbook answer, a victim mindset, one definition is that the belief that bad things will happen and keep happening and there is nothing I can do about it. Everything is someone else's fault. I have no power and there's nothing I can do because nothing will get better. Now, if you have ever worked with other people, you have 100% worked with people who have a victim mindset. There are many, many ways that people come about a victim mindset, but some of the hallmarks are that they don't take accountability. It's literally never their fault. Even if it was literally their fault, they will do all sorts of mental gymnastics to make sure you know it was not their fault. It was outside circumstances. It was the weather. It was this person. It was, it happened because blah, 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 bullshit, 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 whatever nonsense lies. Now, some people really believe that it's not their fault. Um, Some people just lie to try and get out of things. Either way, it's a victim mindset. So they don't take accountability. Um, They make excuses all the time. In order to not take accountability, you have to make excuses, right? They stay helpless instead of changing their circumstances. I know a lot of people who just complain. There's a reason. So I have very few roles in my life, Um, but I have maybe five that I live by. One of them is don't complain. One, it doesn't do any good. Two, no one gives a shit. And three, if you're gonna complain, but you're not gonna do anything about it, shut up. <laughs> like, this is this is not a fluffy episode, guys. I'm sorry, I love you, and I will sit with you until you're ready to make a move up to a point. I will not listen to you complain. And I don't want you to accept 
that you can just complain and that will magically get better. If you are complaining about a situation, you have two choices. You accept it, that this is what you're choosing, or you work on getting out of it. We're gonna get to that a little bit later and I wanna get sidetracked and on my soapbox. People with victim mindsets complain and they do not do a damn thing to change their circumstances. They just, oh, woe is me, everything is against me and I can never get out of it because X, Y, Z, um, I, can't, I can't pay my bills. Meanwhile, they blow all of their money on BS. I can't possibly, um, God, get a new job because I don't have XYZ certification or it's not the right time or the economy or, now some of those things may be true, right? So part of identifying when someone is a victim and when someone is just realistic is if they also identify their role in their circumstances. We all play a part in our circumstances. We cannot 100% control our destiny. Systemic oppression exists and the economy exists and coronavirus exists and um, oppression, poverty, like all of these things exist, right? But if we're completely denying our own role, that is a victim mindset. If we are blaming everything but ourselves, then we're a part of that puzzle that is a victim mindset. I don't know why I get fired from every job I have. Maybe it's because you throw tantrums at every job you have and show up late and whatever. Like, maybe you're part of the problem. Y'all, victim, <laughs> you guys can tell, like, victim mindset makes me very frustrated because people can take control of their lives. People can change their lives, but a victim mindset keeps people there. And it is so frustrating. It's like watching someone drown in three inches of water and they're so determined to drown when they can just pick up their head and they just don't. They would rather drown to prove that they're a victim than pick up their freaking head. I'm sure that you know people like this because they exist and they're very frustrating. You can spot them a mile away. Someone who chronically complains, someone who never, ever, ever is at fault for anything that happens to them. All, someone who's like, victim mindsets are very often dramatic because they wanna prove that they are a victim. And so they will make everything about them. Um, well, she was rude because she hates me. Everyone hates me. They just treat me like crap. Maybe you're an asshole. <laughs> like, maybe that's the problem, right? Again, guys, this is not a fluffy episode. I have a lot of feelings on victim mindset. So they are just really not aware of their behaviors and consequences to those behaviors. That's an issue because if you were aware of your behaviors and the consequences, then they would also understand their role in the consequences. Um, they often have very low self-esteem because when you're helpless and you're a victim and everything happens to you and it's all negative, well, you probably don't feel very good about yourself. You probably don't have a lot of belief in your ability to change your circumstances. Now, there's a lot of reasons that people have a victim mindset. I find that it's it's absolutely generational. If you are if you grew up with caretakers who had a victim mindset, then, well, if that's the language you speak in your house, guess what you're going to speak when you grow up? Just like if you grow up in a home that's really, really violent, you're going to think that that's normal. So sometimes, very often, it can come from how we grew up. It can come from trauma. If something really, really traumatic happens and there's not like a really clear um, why or what happened, we can internalize it and say, it's our fault. I must have deserved it. I must have done something wrong. Um, and then we start looking to validate that worldview. It can come from culture. Some people are taught not to take accountability. 
more so than others. Um, that's a whole Pandora's box. Um, so there's a lot of reasons that people do it, but more importantly, we want to figure out if we're doing it and fix it. So other consequences of a victim mindset. Again, having really low self-confidence because you have no power, you have no control, there's nothing you can do, nothing works out. Like, can you see how that really doesn't make you feel good about yourself or life? That's a problem. Learned helplessness. And you may be like, what, Amanda, what's that? I'm gonna tell you. Learned helplessness is where you literally learn to be helpless. Instead of helping yourself, instead of taking action, you just sit in that helplessness. So for example, um, I used to work with a client who really wanted to said, they really wanted to work. They really wanted a job. They wanted to support their family. They wanted to feel good about themselves. But they spent, and when I tell you, like months, literally months, feeling sorry for themselves, beating themselves up, wishing, right, I'm going to put that in quotes, wishing they could apply to a job, not feeling motivated to apply to a job. All of these victim mindset, oh, I wasn't motivated, it wasn't the right time, I, the economy is bad, I was so tired, blah, blah, like, no one cares, first of all. I don't care. No one cares. I don't care. Um, they spent months, literally months. I don't even know if they work now. And this was, I haven't worked with them in almost a year. But I'd be willing to bet they still don't have a job. Months playing victim on why they were too tired or too overwhelmed or too stressed. Not to discount those things, right? I don't want to sound like a jerk. Those things play a part. But all you have to do is move your hands over a keyboard and apply to a job. And then you show up and work. Like, it's pretty simple once you break it down to its, like, really raw components. Are there a lot of mental blocks that got in the way for this person? Absolutely, 100%. The caveat, though, is that they allowed those mental blocks to stay in the way. We all have mental blocks. We all experience moments of victim mindset. Like even me, I don't care who you are, you experience it sometimes. Staying there is a choice. Some people don't know they don't have to stay there. Hopefully they're listening to this episode. Some people don't know how to get out of it. In which case, I hope you're listening to this episode because I'm going to tell you how. But choosing to stay there, choosing to say, there's nothing I can do. I just, I guess I'll just die sad. Is a choice, people. It is a choice. And it is a choice you do not have to make. So let me tell you how you get out of it. Because that choice will lead to anger, depression, hopelessness, like, I watch people, and I've done this since I was a young kid, which was probably real fun for adults. <laughs> I would ask people what, they, what their dream was. I would literally say like, what's your dream? What's the dream? I was a weird kid, right? Whatever. And they would say often something very different from what they were living. Oh, I, I wanna be, um, I wanna own a ski resort in the Alps. I've never had anyone say that, but that sounds really cool. And I would say, why aren't you doing that? Not understanding as a child that there's many, many reasons why people can't or don't do that, right? But if that's what you say your dream is, oh, I just couldn't, um, things like that don't work out for me. That's a victim mindset. Um, well, it's, um, it's just too expensive. Okay, make money. Like, that's a victim mindset. Now, guys, understand that it's not just that simple. You can't just go rob a bank and have money to buy a ski resort, right? But there are things you can do to get closer to your dream. Victims do not do any of those things. So here's how we get out of a victim mindset. Because when we live in a victim mindset, you will give up your life to prove yourself right. 
that things don't work out, that nothing works out for you, that people don't love you, that everyone leaves, that you can't make money, that you'll never be successful, that you'll never own a car that works well. All of those things are victim mindset. So how do we get out of it? Amanda, I hear you say, this is going to be a a quick episode, probably like 25 minutes or so. Why am I telling you this? Who knows? But here we go. We get out of a victim mindset by not blaming others and figuring out what our role in this is. For example, if you say, I'll never be able to move out of my crappy apartment because I don't make enough money, but then you eat out every day or um, you haven't learned new skills to be eligible for a raise, or you know that you can get a higher paying job, but you don't take a higher paying job because that would require work, whose fault is it that you have to stay in your crappy apartment? I'll give you a hint. It's not your landlords and it's not God or spirit or universe or whatever you say. Like it's yours. It's your fault. It is your fault. It's not wholly your fault, but it is partly your fault. Oh, my boss will never give me a raise because they're the worst person on the planet. Yeah, maybe they are, but like, have you up leveled your skills? Are you even a good employee? Have you looked into other jobs that pay more? What are you doing to take control of your life? That's how we start taking accountability. What is my role in my misery? Now you may not like the answer that you find when you ask yourself that question, but that's the point. The point is that that answer makes you uncomfortable enough that you say, well, hot damn, ugh. <laughs> I don't like this and I can change it. That is the awareness piece. I don't like this and I can change it because I do X, Y, Z that keeps me here, right? I'll give you an example. Over time, I want to decrease my caseload, but I keep taking on new people. <laughs> like whose fault is it that I have as many clients I do a week? It's mine. 100% it's my fault. Now I can blame insurance companies or I can blame everyone who needs help. Like that's stupid. And also it's not true. It's just me. I just keep scheduling people. It's my fault. Now, once I know that without judgment, right? So we want to take accountability without beating ourselves up. We want to practice compassion. This is step number two. We want to practice compassion with what we find in our answer. Ooh, boy, howdy. Some things are your fault. Acknowledge it, accept it, and try not to beat yourself up about it because it is what it is. You've done it this long. You haven't had great results. Shaming yourself and beating yourself up is not going to get you to where you want to be. It's just not. It's going to make you feel like crap. And then it reinforces your victim mindset. So please practice compassion with yourself and what you find when you ask yourself, hey, what am I doing to keep me here? What am I doing to not change my life? So if you do nothing else but those two, you'll have a huge step forward over a lot of people. The next one is practice gratitude. Your brain cannot, cannot practice gratitude and be miserable. It can only do one thing at a time. So the more that you practice gratitude, the more you start training your brain to see positive things. Now, a couple weeks ago, we talked about, or in a couple weeks, not exactly sure the uh, order that these are going to go in. I talked about, pos to bleh, talked about toxic positivity. Now, we don't want to ignore reality, right? We want to just acknowledge what we are grateful for. Start very simple. I'm grateful that gravity exists and I'm not hurling into space. That's a good one. On my list is usually birds. I love birds. So I'm always like, I'm grateful that birds exist because I love birds. Madge, my dog is always on the list. Kitty is always on the list. Tacos is usually on the list. It can be things that are that simple. I'm grateful that I'm practicing awareness of my mindset. 
I'm grateful for this podcast. You don't have to put that on there. But hey, why not? So we literally want to start training our brains to see the positive because if you're practicing gratitude, you are not in a victim mindset. They can't exist at the same time. We want to practice awareness of our thoughts. So just like when we start asking ourselves, hey, how are we, how are we contributing to this problem that I dislike in my life or this pattern that I hate in my life? That's awareness. Over time, once you're aware enough of something, you're going to stop doing it because it'll be so far. You'll be aware that it's so far from where you want to be. You'll have no choice but to change it. How long that takes is kind of different for everyone, but it everyone does eventually get there because you just you start being like, like really pissed off <laughs> about what is happening and uh, where you want to be like how far it is from where you want to be. So having awareness of your thoughts, of your role in your life. Just start thinking about your thoughts, especially noticing the victim mindset thoughts. Pretty soon you'll start changing them on your own. Because a victim mindset contributes to and really prolongs low self-esteem, we want to work on building self-esteem. And you may like, maybe be like, I mean, uh, but I have to um, feel good about myself before I take action. Nay, friend. No, you don't. That's a lie. Lies. It's not true. What actually builds self-esteem is taking action. Even little bitty, 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 bitty actions like practicing awareness, practicing gratitude, asking yourself, what your role is in your life, taking accountability. All of those things are literally actions because you're doing a thing. They build confidence. If you say, God, I really hate the job I'm in. What can you do to start working on getting out of it? Can you learn a skill? Can you Google free courses online? Can you start even looking at other jobs? Um, what can you do that is an action you can take? That will build your confidence. The last one may be a harder one because self-reflection can be difficult for a lot of people if they don't practice it, but maybe it's easy for you. Who knows? I just make stuff up. Think about where you learned the victim mindset from. What was the language you heard growing up around people who did change their lives? Or was there always a million reasons that people couldn't change their lives or take action? This is going to be a really illuminating answer for you. Let's say, for example, you grew up in a family where one family member, um, no one no one had a high school or college education, and one family member decided to go to college. Now, there's two ways your family can react, right? Your family can be super proud of them, oh, first, first one in the family to go to college, and that's so great, we're so proud of them, and, and we support them. But the other way, well, they're an uppity bitch now, and they're too good for us. Only rich people go to college. Who do they think they are? Like they're better than us and they're gonna do what? Get a job? The second one, I hope you can recognize, is a victim mindset. Now, if that's the language that you hear growing up, you're going to internalize that. And if you never stop and think about it, then you don't know what your thought soundtrack is, but it becomes really ingrained. What was the language you heard growing up around people who did take accountability? Did anyone you know growing up take accountability? Maybe not. That is a problem because where would you learn to take accountability from if you didn't hear it growing up? Like, yeah, as an adult, you can learn these things, but we don't know what we don't know. So just start thinking about what was the language around accountability and growth and taking responsibility or someone doing better? That's going to give you a lot of really good information on your own soundtrack and your own belief systems because we inherit the belief system of our caregivers. Think about how you grew up. Did you grow up with 
For example, I can imagine someone in the foster system grew up with a more of a victim mindset because they're treated like victims. They're, they're trained to be helpless. That's kind of an issue, right? So then when they grow up, they don't understand how it correlates to having a victim mindset. So just start thinking about that. That's our list. So I'm going to go over it again, right? We stop blaming others. We take accountability for our own role in our lives and our circumstances. You are not 100% responsible for your circumstances, but you are also not 0% responsible. In between there is a number where you are that much responsible. We are compassionate with ourselves, meaning we don't beat ourselves up. We give ourselves forgiveness for what we didn't know. You can choose at any time to just change your mindset. It's just a practice. This is how you practice that. We practice gratitude. You cannot have a victim mindset and practice gratitude at the same time. Your brain just can't do that. We are curious about our behaviors. Why do we do the things that we do? Why do we think the things that we think? If every time I say I want a new job, I never look for a new job, why? If every time I say I want to lose five pounds, I just complain about not being able to lose five pounds, but I don't actually eat better or move my body, why? Why don't I do those things? Those are really illuminating. We build self-confidence by taking action. Take action action and the confidence will come. It is never be confident and then take action ever in life. It is take action and confidence will follow. And then we think about where we learn this victim mindset from. What was the language we heard growing up? How did people talk about people who were changing their lives or doing better? Now, the last thing is that we start saying, what do I want to be different? And what's it going to take to get there? That's a whole other episode. But this one is just about victim mindset and how to get out of it. So if you find that you have a victim mindset, please know this. You can change it at any time. You can literally start building new thought patterns simply by building new thought patterns. It is simple, meaning the tasks are not very complicated, but it is not easy, but it can be done. I teach people to do this literally all the time with pretty good results. If you have questions about that, if you're not sure if one of your thoughts is a victim mindset, send me a message. I am happy to help you figure it out. What part of this did you agree with or not agree with? Tell me. That's it for today, guys. Go out and practice. Practice awareness. Practice taking accountability. It is just a practice. The more you practice, the better you get. And then see how it goes. All right, y'all. Have a beautiful day. I wish you luck. Thank you for hanging in for this long. I hope that that episode was useful. If you want me to do more on that topic or topics like it, please let me know. Send me a message so that I know what you guys want. I don't want to be up here just talking and you guys are like, this doesn't apply to me because that's a waste of both of our times. If you have questions, if any of it was confusing, again, send me a message. All right, y'all go out and kick this day's ass.